My name is Mike Sharples and I'm Emeritus Professor of Education Technology at the Open University in the UK. So at the moment artificial intelligence is evolving rapidly and it's taking the same sort of trajectory as the World Wide Web, going from research to a big innovation breakthrough to being embedded in tools. And what happened next with the World Wide Web was social media. And I think that's going to happen also with generative AI. It's going to become social. It's going to be embedded into social media, but it's also going to support different kinds of social interactions. Interactions through AI, interactions with AI, with AI systems interacting with each other. And that's going to have huge implications for education. We know that education can be really effective if it supports collaboration and group work. So there are big opportunities, but also big dangers once AI becomes a participant in social engagement, in conversation across the web. So I was looking forward in my talk to what will happen over the next few years when AI expands and becomes social and what are the opportunities and dangers for education of that. Well, one opportunity is machine translation. So just imagine that you have a Zoom conversation with people around the world where each person can be talking in their own native language and everybody else can hear in their own native language and the AI is doing the translation between that. Now that offers huge opportunities for people to be able to express themselves in a more natural way. But also big dangers because the AI will then be acting as an intermediary, as an interlocutor. And as we know, AI can get things wrong. And also it's very difficult sometimes to translate between languages, particularly to get the context right. So that's just one example where AI is acting as a universal translator. There are many other opportunities, AI acting as a mediator in discussions, uh, AI helping students and teachers to repurpose educational materials, to do peer tutoring. So all the kinds of social interactions that we know are valuable for education, AI could have a role in those. So the point I was making in my talk is that teaching is a caring profession and it's really important to recognize it as such. We care about our students, we care about the uh, material that we teach, um, we care about each other as educators and AI is intrinsically uncaring. It can simulate empathy, it can simulate caring, but it doesn't care in the same way that humans do. So, I think there are two implications of that. One, we need to develop more ethical AI that has at least a basis of um, an ethical perspective um, to stop it being biased, um, to try and restrict um, its you know, inappropriate use of language. But also as humans, we need to treat it with care. We need to um, use it as a support for teaching, but not as a substitute for teaching. Um, Students need to recognize that they always need to take a critical stance with AI, not just to accept what it gives to them, but to interrogate it and to respect the human teachers. So I think we need to build trust between um, students and teachers and AI uh, and recognize each of them has a role, but AI is no substitute for human care. Teachers and educators are experts in good pedagogy. That has to be the starting point. What works? So for instance, you know, uh, authentic assessment um, works, um, dynamic assessment, formative assessment, peer learning, all of these are good pedagogies and AI can support those good pedagogies. But instead of just saying, help, how do we adjust to AI? I think the starting point has to be what's good teaching and learning and then how can AI supplement that. So 
teachers and you know, pedagogy experts are going to become even more important in an era of AI to try and counter some of the misinformation and the bad teaching that's going to happen as companies start developing AI tools. I think, in general, the starting point has to be that students don't want to cheat. They want to learn, um, and they want to pass exams, um, but they don't necessarily want to cheat to do that. So we have to you know, work with students on really clear guidance about what's acceptable and what isn't. And in the future, AI is going to be embedded in all the tools that students use, uh, in their office tools, in their web tools, so we have to accept that AI is there, that students are going to use them. So I think what's going to happen in the future is that for assessment, we will allow students to use AI, but to say that's not enough. You then have to build on that. You have to build your own perspective, your own knowledge. Uh, and that either means um, a more rigorous exams, which then assess that excellence, or new ways of assessment that assess the student's learning journey, the process, um, how students are progressing uh, and how students are reflecting on their progress. And there are good methods of assessment to do that around, um, uh, around authentic assessment, project-based work, uh, and so I think we need to look at those, but not to assume that students want to cheat, to help them to develop those skills of moving beyond AI into excellence in their work. Oh, um, I still remember the first lecture I ever gave where I was, um, had to take over from another lecturer. He handed me a pile of um, um, slides then for overhead projector and said, teach this. And I thought, because I'd had no training in, in how to teach. So I thought all I had to do was just put these slides on one after another and just talk to them. And it was a disaster. There were too many slides, I didn't understand what I was teaching, and I really realized at that point it's not enough just to deliver content. You have to understand what you're teaching, you have to understand your students, and in particular, you have to know what is you know, a good method of teaching. So I completely changed my teaching as a result of that. And that was my lesson, that it's not enough just to teach content, you really need to understand how to teach and you really need to understand your students. It's an amazingly well organized conference. I've been really impressed. You know, you've got a lot of people here, um, but the, the sessions are you know, interesting, exciting, and they are um, both grounded in practice, but also exploring you know, new theories, new approaches. So I just hope you, you know, carry on for the, how long has it going, been going for, 18 years? Yeah. I hope you, you know, carry on with that sort of upward trajectory for the next 18 years. It's a great conference and I'm really enjoying it. And I'm enjoying being in Valencia. <laughs> <laughs>